Hi friends, welcome to lecture 33 in our helicopter dynamics class. And today I'm going to talk about the actuator disk in context of momentum theory. And in this lecture and from now on in some lectures, we are going to focus on the right hand side of the differential equation for blade flapping. And we are going to look at how the forcing term comes about. So for that, we need to figure out some of the basic physics behind the generation of the forcing term. So that's what we are going to discuss in the next few lectures. And again, I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now, we know that the forces which act on the main rotor, they depend on the flight condition. So you have forward flight and you have vertical flight. These are the two main classifications of a helicopter type of vehicle. Now, naturally, you would imagine that the simpler flight condition would be vertical flight. And in vertical flight, you have two different possibilities. You have the helicopter hanging in air in one place, and this is known as the hover flight condition. And then you have the possibility of a vertical climb. So the helicopter just moves up vertically, and this is the climb condition. So we are going to look at these two separately. First, we are going to look at the hover condition and then the climb condition. Now, one of the advantages of a hover condition is that the air velocity and loads on the rotor blades are independent of psi. That is, as you go around the rotor disc, the air velocity and loads do not change. Or in mathematical or geometric terms, we can say that we have axial symmetry. And this will greatly simplify the dynamics and the fluid mechanics of the helicopter rotor in the hover condition. And that is why in all the books you will see and all the classes you will see, we tackle this flight condition first because it is the simpler flight condition. So again, let us continue our definition more and more formally. Hover is the state in which the lifting rotor has no velocity relative to the air. And also there is axial symmetry of the main rotor. So these facts are going to help us in getting some of the equations in the next few classes. Now, if we look at the basic aerodynamic theory, which is behind the hover condition, it is known as momentum theory. And momentum theory has been with us since the 19th century. So during the 19th century, there was a revolution in terms of steamships and the ships used to go around the world for global trade and so on. And so there was a lot of research done on marine propellers and this led to the growth of momentum theory. Now, following this great development of momentum theory for the marine propellers, there was also the typical airplane which came up and much before the jet engines became quite dominant, all the airplanes used to have propellers. And so again, propellers use momentum theory. So that's the genesis of the momentum theory. So essentially, this theory was ready when the helicopter type vehicles came into fruition and could be very easily used. Now, the objective of momentum theory analysis is to predict the forces generated and power required by the rotating blade. And the second objective, of course, is to design the most efficient rotor and also to get insights into what would be the most efficient rotor. Now, in momentum theory, we try to apply the basic conservation laws of fluid mechanics to the rotor flow to estimate the rotor performance. 
And again, you will probably recall from fluid mechanics that the equations for fluid mechanics, which are the most basic, relate to conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, and conservation of energy. So we are going to use these three equations on the complete fluid flow and then derive the flow field for the particular flow. So in momentum theory, the rotor is treated as a whole. So one of the things is that the blades which make up the rotor are not concerned. So here you imagine the rotor to be a disc and essentially it's like there are an infinite number of blades on the rotor which are generating the thrust and are consuming the power. Also, momentum theory is sometimes known as a global analysis because it relates the flow velocities which are taking place through the rotor to the total thrust generated and the power required. Now, what the rotor disc does is that it supports a thrust created by the action of air on the blade. So, this is the basic model of the rotor. So essentially you have the rotor which is the line here you see and from this line there is a thrust coming out. So you can see the thrust here. Now according to Newton's third law this thrust is being generated by the rotor but there must be an equal and opposite reaction which will be imparted by the rotor to the air. So now we see the basic diagram where the main rotor is generating thrust. Far on top of the rotor there is a velocity zero and then as this air goes through the rotor there is a small increase in velocity we will call it small v and further down, much further down in the rotor wake, the velocity has become W. So this is the basic flow of air through the rotor in the hover condition as it is used in momentum theory. So air in the rotor wake picks up a velocity which is reverse to the direction of the thrust motion or the thrust. Now this will therefore create some extra Ke present in the air and this is supplied by the rotor. And if you are far on top of the rotor, the air has a zero velocity as we saw in the previous slide. So what happens is that some energy is lost to the air and this energy loss constitutes the induced power loss of a rotary wing vehicle. Now this concept is ubiquitous across any rotary wing vehicle whether it is powering a helicopter or it is powering a drone. Now this concept is also very similar to the induced drag concept of a fixed wing vehicle. Now in general looking at it philosophically induced drag is the price we must pay to generate trust. So what is practical in terms of the rotor is that we are using it to generate thrust here and so naturally there is no free lunch so we have to pay a penalty for this thrust and that is through induced drag which then will become induced power. So momentum theory mathematically relates a quantity T by m dot to the induced velocity in the far wake W. Now T by m dot is the rotor thrust per unit mass flow. Now energy conservation will relate T by m dot W and the induced velocity at the rotor disc which we will denote by the small v and momentum conservation will give us m dot in terms of the induced velocity small v. So again momentum theory is not concerned with the details of the rotor loads it just produces a thrust and also it is not sufficient for designing the blades because 
you can see that the blades are never coming into picture in the momentum theory. For that, we will go to a separate theory later. So nothing like the blade cord is coming in here. The air file sections, all these are not coming in momentum theory. So as far as momentum theory is concerned, you have a rotor and the only thing momentum theory knows about this rotor is its radius. So that's the main thing you are designing here. You are designing for the rotor radius. So now we come to the concept of actuator disk. So the way we are discussing the rotor in momentum theory is actually a mathematical device called the actuator disk. And this is essentially a circular surface of zero thickness that can support the pressure difference. And essentially this actuator disk takes the air and imparts it a certain velocity through this disk. So it acts as a disc it doesn't act like a rotor with many blades but we can approximate a rotor with many blades as an actuator disc so essentially that is what is going on in momentum theory now the actuator disc can also impart a torque therefore an angular momentum to the fluid as it passes through the disc and once again, one of the things which actua actuator disk theory is doing is that it is assuming that there are an infinite number of blades. So you can consider that approximation here, which is being made. So the blade loading is distributed over an infinite number of blades. So in conclusion, we can say that the flow through the actuator disk is very different from that of a real rotor with a small number of blades. But actuator theory captures the basic physics of the rotor very well and predicts rotor power quite satisfactorily. And that is why you will see actuator disk theory in conjunction with momentum theory is being used throughout the helicopter and rotor prediction processes. In fact, most of the first cut predictions on power come from momentum theory, whether you are working with helicopter, whether you are working with wind turbine, or whether you are working with any drone or flying taxi type of vehicles, which are now becoming ubiquitous. So in the next lecture, I'm going to go into the mathematical details and we are going to get into all the conservation equations, the Bernoulli equation and so on and try to get the values for these quantities we have discussed today. That is W in terms of V, that is the velocity in the far wake in terms of the velocity on the rotor disk, and also derive expressions for thrust and power. So what we are interested here, of course, is in power, because if we can predict power, then we can select the power plant or engine, which is going to be required by this particular vehicle. That is one of the main things we need to do in preliminary design is that we need to size the rotor. We need to say what is its radius and we need to then say, can we power this particular rotor? And a lot of these answers can come from simple momentum theory. So I'll stop here. I will see you in my next lecture.